Welcome to Freedom Cast, where your hosts, Jordan and Miranda, show you how to get just a little bit more out of life. Are you ready to leave normal behind? Welcome to Freedom Cast. Today we have a very special guest, my little sister, Justine Holsey, who works at a radio station doing videos. Doesn't make sense? Listen in and you'll find out why it does. So we are so happy that she was on and it's a great episode. So enjoy. All right. Welcome to Freedom Cast, everyone. We have Justine Halsey on with us today. This is Miranda's sister. Um, yep. What, what? Hey, how are you doing, Justine? What's up, y'all? I'm good. Oh, and awesome. you know, you know, <laughs> you can call me J-Boss. Oh, yeah. You know, I should I should have started with that. I apologize. Oh, J-Boss no problem. is on with us today. OK, cool. J-Boss is on with us today. Um, we didn't we're not only having her on the show because she's Miranda's sister, but because she's J Boss and she's cool. And she, she paid a, us off. She paid us off. <laughs> she has a good I story. Them. No, just kidding. Yes, she did. <laughs> she has a good story and a lot of stuff. And um I'm gonna let Miranda ask the questions because these two are gonna go back and forth and it's gonna be fun. Um, you know, we love it. We what love that they're crazy sisters. Even though when we're together, I usually team up with Justine against Miranda just for fun. Which, um, yeah, I do. I take issue with that. <laughs> uh, it's all right. It's all in good fun. Yes, it's all, all in good, good fun. fun. You know? Yes. It's because we so, like you. <laughs> yes. Well, I would hope so because you're my, you're my sister and Jordan is my husband. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and good luck telling us apart. I wonder if we sound similar. That's a good question. I don't know. You know? Yeah, I don't know because I can't hear you both right now. So I don't know. I'll tell you. We can confuse everyone. You can start asking okay. the questions. And... <laughs> what Every do you time do? you guys talk, you need to say, this is Miranda or this is J-Boss. <laughs> we actually used to have diaries that were voice activated. So you had to say the password to get into it. And we would always get into each other's because we <laughs> all we sound alike. Same. Yeah. You remember that? I do. Yeah. You got into mine a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure one of our cousins re-recorded my password as them burping, and then I could just <laughs> never get back in. <laughs> That's awesome. And that was the end of those. Yep. Good fun. I, I think you guys. I don't think you guys sound like super sim- similar. I don't think any of you really do. Well, that's. But good. that might just be me. Yeah. We'll see when it comes out on the podcast. See what it sounds like, but it'll be interesting. Yeah. I think you just had like really oh. cheap diaries. <laughs> that probably just let anyone yeah. in. <laughs> no, we only had the best quality. Highest quality. Top shelf. <laughs> yes, top shelf all the time. So, Justine, I just wanted you to kind of introduce yourself. Let us know um, about your job right now, which is really cool, and about just where you live and, you know, all the cool things about you that we love. Ah, okay. Well, right now. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I work at 98 Rock and WBAL News Radio 1090. And it's funny, those the are Rock. 98 Rock. Is that those what they are do? Uh, <laughs> oh, all the time. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so those are radio stations in Baltimore. And I actually make videos for the radio stations, which is crazy. You're like, J Boss. What does that mean? How are you making video for the radio? It doesn't even make sense. It makes no <laughs> sense. Well. But it's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. So I live in Baltimore. You can actually see the station from my house. So I, can, I could walk to work if I wanted to, which is pretty awesome. But anyway. That is very cool. That's just a little side note. <laughs> um, so I'll tell you about the job. I've been there for almost a year it'll be a year in january which is crazy wait it it, has it really been a year i thought it was i know i know (laughs) isn't that crazy i'm an awful sister (laughs) that's okay it's it's flown by for me too i couldn't believe it either it's crazy wow that's awesome um so my everyday task there at 98 rock is operating livewire and livewire is the live video stream of the justin scott and spiegel morning show so that's a comedy show. Um, I operate four cameras by using a TriCaster, 
which is also known as a, known as a switchboard. So I, oh. you know, press the buttons. I switch the cameras. There's a joystick, so I can move the cameras around. That's really uh, cool <laughs> that you have a joystick. That's awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like a it's like a game. Like uh, the other day. Never mind. I'm not going to tell that story. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay. I want to hear it though. <laughs> yeah, now we want to hear it. <laughs> well, now it's not going to live up to the potential. I, I it was overhyped. I overhyped it. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, one of the hosts brought in their dog into the studio, which now he's not allowed to do. He kind of got in trouble. But, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but it, I was having fun just kind of searching for the dog in the studio. <laughs> um, because there's four different cameras and the, the dog would like go under their desk and I could, you know, figure out where he was and then try and get him on the camera. You know what I mean? <laughs> so wait, I like, wait, does the camera, there's a camera <laughs> under the desks? No, there's, they're all attached to the ceiling. But oh. from different angles, I could, okay. you know, see underneath <laughs> it. Why would you need a camera? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like a hunt. It was a hunt for the dog. Like, where's Waldo? Yeah. But anyway, like I said, that was overhyped for <laughs> sure. That <laughs> no, was good. Still a good story. Yeah, yeah. good story. Um, okay. Where was I? Okay, so <laughs> I you use the uh, switchboard. Is that what I was talking about? I think you so. Yeah, your quad trash. All your fun like tools and stuff. <laughs> that's, that's I'm like so wrong. Right? I'm like I'm like super <laughs> jealous. You have like an entire setup and we don't even have a mixing board yet for our podcast. We'll have to get one someday. We're sharing a mic. We are. Oh wow. Uh, it, that's okay. You know, you'll get yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a TriCaster. TriCaster. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not even sure what you said. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I don't either. even remember. I feel like you were quoting off Star Wars or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't but know anyway. <laughs> anyway. So I can move the cameras. I can press which camera is being seen through the live stream. Um, and then I record it all. So then I can edit it and I can put it on youtube and then share it on social media and it's all good fun yeah and hasn't they like they've seen a big increase in views and stuff since you started too from your videos oh definitely um i mean because there's this is the first time there's been a full-time in-house videographer and editor so just being able to have that consistency i think is huge so we'll put out a video or two a day on Facebook and people know that. So they go and they look for it and they can watch it. So now that there's just some kind of method to the madness, I think that's a, one of the big reasons why there's a lot more views. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know they've taken you on fun little like trips and outings. Um, can you tell us about the, the fun things you've gotten to do in Baltimore because of this job? Oh, okay. Well, we're skipping ahead a little. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> I like to keep you on your toes. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the, the questions are more of a guideline. We, we always just jump around and do whatever. Uh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's a lot more than just the live stream of the morning show. Um, like Miranda said, I get to go on all these little trips uh, we went on a helicopter ride, which was so pretty cool. cool because I've only been on a plane like five times, maybe. So we got to go on a ride around around Baltimore. We flew over M&T Bank Stadium and over Camden Yards. It was super cool. And then what else? We went to Travis Pastrana's house. Do you know who that is? Uh, I feel like you told me, but I forget. <laughs> He's a professional motorsports competitor. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. And uh, he does the nitro circus thing. And uh, I got to ride shotgun. And he took us through this, through his property, which has all these different jumps and stuff. And we were in this razor car. I can only describe it as a, like a Mario Kart mobile. <laughs> I'm not sure machine. how else to call it. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like a roll cage. You know, there was a roll cage. That's um, awesome. And we were hitting all these jumps. It was so cool. And there's GoPro footage of that on my website, which we'll get to later. Yeah, now you're <laughs> jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh gosh, keep running well, out I, of the running other out of really. <laughs> the other really cool one was the pictures you got to take front stage at um, was it Metallica? <laughs> I'm gonna get it wrong. I don't know any rock bands. <laughs> 
Is, does Metallica <laughs> still play? No. Are they alive? Not Metallica. Was so, that one? No. <laughs> You're right. It's Metallica. Oh, nice. I got it right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they did a a tour, and their first stop for that tour was actually Baltimore at M&T Bank Stadium, where the Ravens play, if you didn't know. So, <laughs> yeah, about an hour before Metallica went on, they were like, okay, so you're going to have the photo pass for Metallica. And then I'm like, okay. But in my mind, I'm freaking out <laughs> because <laughs> I've never done concert photography before, ever. And, uh, you know, photography is a different animal than video. You know, it's, there's kind of like some similar things to it, but it's, it's just different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to take pictures of Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Like, one of the biggest rock bands ever. Um, so a woman comes up to escort you down to a room where all the other photographers are. So we get to this room and I'm looking around and there's all these big dudes with bags <laughs> of equipment and some have like step stools. And then I'm just standing there in my 98 rock t-shirt. I'm like five, six, by the way, <laughs> and, uh, holding my, my one little DSLR camera with one lens <laughs> And I'm like, oh boy, I'm in over my head here. I was so <laughs> nervous. But uh, then they take you out and you can be out there for three songs. And those three songs go by really fast. But it was so cool. I was an arm length away from the bassist, Robert Trujillo. And uh, I mean, I could have touched him. And I swear, he looked right at me. He looked <laughs> right at me. And I didn't have a picture from that moment. But it happened, okay? <laughs> He was looking at you because he's like, dang, that girl needs a better camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, so cool. But the pictures turned out great. And, um, you know, it all worked out in the end. And I'm very proud of that moment. Yeah, that's a really cool story. It kind of reminds me of, this is like a weird analogy, but when you go and you play disc golf, and um like jordan okay. and i we we have <laughs> we have one frisbee each and we'll go and then you see people with just giant cases of frisbees that go to play disc golf and they're so intense and it's just so <laughs> funny because you just are there with your one little frisbee and if you throw it in a bunch of grass and lose it like you're out of luck yeah. i didn't even know that you could have more than just a frisbee you know what i mean I know they have like driver frisbees and I don't know what you call the other ones. I know it's like a big thing, but like I agree with Miranda. It's ridiculous. I mean, they have like entire backpacks and some of them are even have those like backpacks on wheels, like carrying them through the woods. It just looks so dumb. <laughs> I'm not trying to be offensive to anyone that likes disc golf. I love disc golf, but come on, like at least put it on your back, uh, on your back. Like, don't roll it around like you're in an airport. Like, it's it's so <laughs> silly. It's so ridiculous. And you don't need airport. thirty. You don't need thirty eight discs to play disc golf. You you really only need one. But I don't know. Don't get us started on that. But yeah, sorry, that was that touchy. Seems like, that touchy seems subject. Great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we're not bitter or anything. <laughs> Yeah, I got us on a bunny trail there. It's all right. I'm not feeling that great, so I'm feeling a little punchy today. So we're, it's good. Good yeah. day to do an episode. Jordan has a little cold, so he's drinking oh, no. his tea. Yeah. Good. You need your fluids. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to talk about how you kind of found out that you have a passion for film and photography, too, because you're really good at that as well. And oh, how you. You, yeah, how you kind of got into that whole realm of things. Uh, okay. Well, you know, you were a big part of this, Miranda. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it started. In That's the why I want you to talk about it. <laughs> it started in the 90s. And, uh, you know, our parents had a video camera. And they probably got it thinking they were going to take great, you know, <laughs> memory memories of our lives and something they could cherish forever which is true they did do that but um we also kind of took it took the camera and made it our own and we just went crazy with the video camera we were making all these goofy plays and movies 
and we would put on all these costumes and uh, basically just make all these crazy home videos. And they're very, very embarrassing. It's and it's a lot of blackmail. We have about a hundred hours of blackmail from our childhood. I don't know that one you guys have. Like, I seriously want to share it on Facebook because it was it's so awesome. I Wait, think you one? should. The one I you think just you should share it. The one you just showed me like last night. The oh. one you just randomly were watching again. <laughs> like, I don't know why you were watching that one, but it's so the funny. One, the one when we're dancing with the scarves to the "Do You Love Me" song. Oh no, we're not sharing. <laughs> We're not sharing that one. We can share another one. I think I already got permission. I'll just cut that part out of this podcast and go for it. (laughs) That one one didn't have a plot. That was more just us being weirdos. So it was awesome. That is true. But anyway, that was that was like our our hobby. That's what we did in our free time. We made these home videos. We didn't have friends. We just made videos. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Um. (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> then th- all throughout high school, I would take projects and I would term- turn them into videos. So if we had a basic PowerPoint presentation we had to do, I would make a feature length film of <laughs> Macbeth. You know, I would make um, I would make music videos for a French project where I was supposed to write a poem in French, I would just turn it into a song and then make some kind of weird music video. You also did a one woman version of Phantom I knew of the that Opera. was <laughs> I knew that was gonna come up. I knew that was <laughs> Which is pretty spectacular. <laughs> yeah. Can't find that one. <laughs> I didn't I didn't even know about that one, so I'm gonna have to hear well, that story later. <laughs> well my whole film crew, which was, you know, Ashlyn, Miranda, and Lindsay, my sisters, they were at prom and I was very bored because I was still in the eighth grade. And so I decided to make a movie and I thought, you know what makes sense? A one woman (laughs) Phantom of the Opera. (laughs) What is not entertaining about that? (sighs) So all throughout high school, I would make these videos. And then in college, I was like, you know what? This kind of makes sense. I'm going to go go for a career in film. And I think people were kind of scratching their heads like, oh, so you're going to move like to California and like work on a movie set? And I don't think that's ever what I had in mind. But I was like, no, I'm pretty sure you can find stuff around here that you can do, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like people uh, didn't really get it at first. (laughs) That doesn't have to be in there. No, we're still we're still trying to explain to people what Jordan does for a living now. So, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I make video for the radio. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's kind of how it all started. Yeah. So, what um, what were your other jobs before you started working at the radio station? Because these are, I think, your Baltimore Magazine one's pretty interesting too. Oh yeah. Well, that's how it all started. I got an internship at Baltimore Magazine. And then they hired me to do freelance work for them. And we would do these really cool local pieces on restaurants or on um, like the Otterbein Cookie Factory, which is very famous in Baltimore. And then if you come in, if you're driving into Baltimore, you'll see the Domino Sugar sign. And it was really cool. We did a video on that where we actually got to go onto the roof where that sign is, which people don't get to do because it's still a working sugar refinery. And it's very dangerous. I don't know if you know this, but sugar is highly flammable and <laughs> or explosive or something like that. But so we got to go up on the roof, which was a really cool experience. You could see the whole city from up there. And we just learned about this iconic sign that everyone knows about. Um, I think they said the dot on the eye is six feet tall. Wow. So it was just such a cool experience. And it was so Baltimore, which is awesome because that's where I live. Yeah. You, you love Baltimore. (laughs) Yeah, I do. Good morning, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yes. It's a special (laughs) place. So this next question I know it's really hard to pick, but I wanted you to share what your top three favorite movies are at this moment. Uh, oh, it's so tough. 
Okay. It's always a hard question to answer. We recognize I that. I know. Well, what, but it's fun to talk about because even if it changes, it's good. Yeah. Miranda, I would like you to share your favorite movie first. My, <laughs> okay. <laughs> My probably all-time favorite movie that I can just watch over and over again is probably Love Actually. Oh, which not what I was expecting. I, <laughs> I love I love that movie. I wasn't sure what you were going to say, honey. <laughs> but my favorite epic movie is Lord of the Rings, the whole all three. And then so Love Actually is like my favorite chick flick, I guess. And then my favorite epic is Lord of the Rings. And then I like Frozen. <laughs> what happened to the Emperor's New Groove? And see, that was my favorite movie for a long time, but I haven't seen it in probably a couple of years now. So. It's because you met me and I introduced you to other things other than just Emperor's <laughs> New Groove. <laughs> you threw off the Emperor's Groove. <laughs> okay. So I guess <laughs> what makes what makes a movie your favorite is kind of one that you can go back and watch multiple times, right? Yeah, I think that's definitely a good signifier. So one that I can always watch is Run Lola Run. And it's actually in German, um, but it's such a cool movie. It's so high energy and it has this cool concept of um, like how different interactions can change the outcome of your life. And the colors are so cool. It's just a great movie. And it's only 90 minutes, I think. And I'm all about that. I can, I can go for a short movie. Um, and, and you don't speak a word of German. <laughs> I don't, but the subtitles help. Uh, I've then, seen that. I've seen that movie too, Justine, and I can concur that it is a really good movie. Oh, I've never seen it. Hm. What? Really, I've never seen it. Oh, you I'll have to check it to out. Watch it. Well, you're visiting me soon, so you can watch it then. Yes. Yeah, you should. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, another one is one that came out recently, and that's Baby Driver. I'm all about movies with really good soundtracks, and that definitely has a great soundtrack. It's another high energy one. It's got a cool plot. And when it comes to the antagonist, there's this interesting dynamic where you're not really sure who the bad guy is. Interesting. Which I always like. And uh, the last one is Forrest Gump uh. because it just, it holds up. I could watch that movie every time it's, time it's on and I'll still laugh and I'll still get, you know, a little watery in my eyes. <laughs> Aw. See, I've actually um, never sat through that whole movie either. <laughs> it is, you know what? I just said I like short movies and that one takes forever. Yeah. But, yeah, isn't that one like three and a half hours or something? It's so long. And I remember the first time I watched it too. It was at uh Granny Patton Stan's house for Thanksgiving, I think. And it was on TV and I remember I was so just tied up in it. But I remember thinking, when is this going to be over? <laughs> <'Cause>, like, <laughs> I wanted to watch it, but it just it just kept going on and on. But it definitely holds up. You know, I could watch it over and over again and not get tired of it. And I mean, who doesn't love that little piano ditty? <laughs> Can you sing it for us? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> um, and then my honorable mentions are Dirty Harry, Singing in the Rain, oh, and, yeah. and Get Out which I just watched on Friday. Oh, wow. That's and I'm not a big scary movie person, mm. but it, I guess it's more of a thriller. I don't know. But it was it was a good movie. I recommend it. Well, you seem you seem to have your answers like that didn't seem to be hard for you actually. You seem to be like ready to go with that. That was awesome. I I put a lot of thought into it. So, I think we should hear one of Jordan's favorite movies too since. Ah, uh, yes. To, do I have to do top three? Well, whatever you got. I wasn't, pre I wasn't prepared for this. Whatever you got in your brain right now. Dead Poets Wait, Society is number one. I would put Avengers in the top three. Um, I know there's another one out there that I just can't. Th I, I don't want to say a third because I'm forgetting a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Let me think of it. I'll, th I'll, I'll come back with it later. Is it K-Pax? I haven't seen that in a while. That's up know. there. <laughs> no, that's good. So now kind of switching gears... I want you just seem to tell us what your favorite piece of work that you've done is, what you're most proud of that you've done throughout, you know, since you were five year old to five years old to this point. Oh, okay. 
Well, you know, my one woman, Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> I know that's up there. <laughs> it was impressive. No. It really was. <laughs> that's a lie. I don't think I mentioned that I lip synced everything. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this is probably going to get me in trouble again. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, there's a couple I'm very proud of, but there is one in particular that really sealed the deal that I was in the right major in college. Because I think everyone has that doubt where they're like, oh, I don't know if this is the right path for me. Maybe I should go into this instead. So uh, there was a project in one of my first film classes at Towson where we had to make a two-minute video with no dialogue or sound, which is hard to do, right? Yes. So the location was the only thing you could use to tell the story. So at the time, our parents' divorce was very new and very fresh, and it was kind of up there in my mind, something that I thought about a lot. So naturally, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go for this. And I'm going to make that the topic of my video, my two minute video with no sound. So I went back to our childhood home. And it was so crazy, because at the time, you know, it was just our dad living there. And things were still kind of in the process of being moved and pictures were off the wall and basically there's three there were three floors in that house and he was only using the first floor to kind of live in so i kind of took the camera and went through the house and documented that and it was really interesting and it ended up being really an emotional piece and i remember being so nervous when we went to show it in class but my professor actually started tearing up. And in only two minutes, with no dialogue, I was able to do that, you know? So it kind of just validated my being there in that major. And uh, just being able to get that reaction mm -hmm. from something that I made was really, really cool. Yeah, and it was a really powerful video. And it is cool how you can just using visual things no like no talking no dialogue but just visual you can have such a powerful emotional response is really cool right and also by using you know slow camera pans or you know pulling back the zoom or doing a rack focus there's so many little things that you can do in video to manipulate the viewer and to make them feel a certain way or associate something you know yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, Justine, would you say that was like a, a, just at least maybe just one part of your healing through that whole process? Because I think creating stuff and just, you know, especially when it's something that you're thinking about and is going through or maybe something you're going through in your life. I, I feel like there's a lot of power in creating in that, whether that's writing or painting or uh, making a video of that. Do you, do you find that that was helpful in that process for you? Oh, 100%. I mean, it was kind of my way of expressing myself. You know what I mean? Just kind of wrapping my head around the whole thing that was happening. Uh, yeah, definitely. I felt that way. Cool. That's a cool um, note for our listeners then just, um, you know, as just, again, to the power of creation and just, um, you know, building something from nothing, um, especially based on what you're going through in your life. I, I feel like my most powerful writing comes from stuff that I care deeply about. Um, it's just a good way oh, of, ex of, of expressing yourself and it can make a big difference for you. I think we underestimate the value of uh, creating something um, and, and kind of pouring our heart into something. I think that's a cool thing for our listeners to hear. So thanks for right. sharing that. Yeah, that's a really good note. Oh, sure. And it, you know, it's scary too. I know it wasn't, it wasn't my first idea. I think it may have been like my third or fourth idea and I probably didn't want to tackle it because it was kind of an, an intimidating subject and it's like do I really want to put myself out there like that in front of all of my my whole class I you know was really unsure and I think that's why I was so nervous to show it I still remember feeling so jittery like oh my gosh I can't believe because they everyone else was doing like 
a park or the forest. <laughs> and I'm like, this is my parents' divorce. <laughs> you always go above and beyond, which is awesome. <laughs> but it reminds me of, um, did you say Little Women was one of your favorite movies? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. Not. <laughs> okay. Okay. That was the third one. Oh, man. <laughs> you have mostly brothers. You don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> don't understand the story. Uh, <laughs> but in the end of that movie, it may have been the end. I can't remember. But she's, Joe says, or uh, no, the professor says, you should write what you know. And so she wrote about her family, right? Am yeah. I getting that right? Yeah. Instead yeah. of write, writing her fiction yeah. stories. Yeah. And it ended up being one that she was able to publish. So I think that having emotional connections to things really does help. Yeah. And it is scary when you put yourself out there, but I think that you definitely get more reward out of it because you have your whole heart into it. It's just scary when you put mm -hmm. your whole heart into something because you don't want it to get crushed. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, can you tell us maybe just some of the hurdles you've gone through to kind of get to where you are today? Um, just what what kind of roadblocks have you gone through in your life? How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> we got all day, girl. <laughs> oh, you can well, make the it, last... Justine, you can make it like specific to your... Um, just uh, career and film if you want. I mean, if you have a story you, you had ready, that's fine. But if you want to focus it on um, career-wise, you can. Well, I think just getting through college was kind of the biggest ginormous hurdle I've had because there were all these little baby hurdles that I also had to get past. Like I had to um, get in state tuition, which took forever. I had to get a car, I had a full-time job, I had to take evening classes. The whole process just took me longer, which is fine, but it, it just always felt like there were all these little roadblocks that kept popping up. Like, oh, I got into a car accident and my car was totaled and I had to get another car. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I had Craigslist roommates, which I don't recommend for everybody, but it worked out for me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they're going to be uh, uh, bridesmaids in your wedding now. So it did work yes. big time. <laughs> oh, yeah, for me, for me. But there yeah. are a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of sketchy people out there, okay? <laughs> yeah, just be yeah, careful. Yeah, just to know, Craigslist <laughs> is a scary place. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we all, all of us, all three of us had the same kind of hurdles that we had to get through, which was nice. We were able to get through it together. But just working all the time, and paying the bills, paying the rent, it's really hard. And we were all 19. So we were still young and trying to figure everything out. So I just think that whole experience was very, very challenging. But the reward was great. Because uh, now I really like what I do. Yeah, and that's, that's awesome. awesome. And you uh, actually were a nanny for how many years? <laughs> Almost four years. Four years. You practically raised this little girl. So, <laughs> yeah, I was I was there a lot, and uh, yeah. What do you want to know about that? No, I just think it's it's cool that you were um, working full time as a nanny at the same time as trying to get through college and you know pay the bills, and it was just. You were very dedicated, and it would have been very easy to give up on one thing or another, but. I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I think that shows a lot of determination. Um, any, anyone out there going through college and having a full-time job. I mean, we went to college and like, I feel like I barely even did work at college. I just was like, <laughs> I just treated it like just like a vacation. And, you know, I, I probably shouldn't have done that, but it was a good time. Um, but it's very different when you have to have a full-time job and have to do other stuff. Like you probably had very little time for yourself. Um, you know, at times, I'm sure you felt that way. So I can't even imagine oh. working that much. But that's awesome. That you were able to get through those hurdles and get through it. So that's cool. Yeah, definitely. And um, a lot of people thought, Oh, you're a nanny, you know, so do you like put her in front of the TV? Or <laughs> like, that must be nice laid back. It's like, no, no, kids have so much energy. <laughs> and when you're when you're helping to raise a child, you want the child to end up being you know 
spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure to raise someone else's kid. I'm not going to like ruin this kid. <laughs> so it was a lot of work. And yeah, I'm 40 hours a week. That's no joke. And then to have to go to class afterwards. Yeah. It's really tough. But I think in life, dedication is just sometimes more important. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Oh, for, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think you, you can come, you can jump into any kind of new uh, task and you're not, you may not be great at it right away, but if you have the dedication and consistency, consistency to get better at that task, uh, you could be very successful. Yeah. Like right. This, this and, whole podcast has been a learning process for us and uh, I feel like you chugging along. keep getting a little, <laughs> maybe like a little bit better every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of, a lot of times, you know, I think I'm definitely not the best videographer or uh, editor. I know I have a lot to learn, but I know that my work ethic is no joke and that I am super dedicated. And that sometimes I just think that that's more important because you will learn, you'll figure it out. You'll learn how to do all the different techniques. It comes with time. Yeah. <laughs> just showing up each day and doing your hardest. So. So can you tell us um, maybe what some of your long-term goals are? What what are you looking at in the future? Um, what you kind of want to accomplish and what's getting you excited right now? I really struggled with this question. <laughs> it's not an easy one. Um, <laughs> well, now that I have this job and I've kind of settled in a little bit, I think I need to uh, come up with some goals because... That was my goal for a long time to just get a job in video. Mm -hmm. And now that I've done that, I need to kind of step back and look at the bigger picture, which is hard to do. Oh, yeah. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any advice for me. <laughs> well, we have a whole <laughs> podcast episode on goals, <laughs> don't we? Yeah, no, we don't. Okay, I'm going to keep that in because the last the last podcast we did with Brandon or something, you said the same thing. And I said, no, Miranda, we have that as a potential episode. <laughs> so no. Well, you should do it because I need oh, it. I love that you yeah. said that again. I just really felt like we did. But yeah. I think you feel like. Stay tuned we, for the goal podcast. It's because we always talk about it. You think we have them, which is fine. We just haven't done a specific episode about it, yeah. but we will for sure. Yeah. Well, I know Justine that you're, you started kind of this side hustle that I think is really cool with um, because of all these cool opportunities with the radio, you've gotten the chance to get some really good pictures or like in and around Baltimore. And so I know you're starting to kind of set up on your website where people can buy those images because they're really cool. And, you know, an upfront and personal photo of the Domino sugar sign, like that's really neat. So I think that's kind of like a cool side hustle that you're doing that, you know, that could potentially turn into something bigger. Yeah. Right. I definitely think the photo thing could turn into something bigger. Um, it's just like, whew, that's such a broad spectrum of things that you could do. Yeah. <laughs> I need to focus it. I need to reel yeah. it in. <laughs> I think, um, Justine, I wanted to jump in. The only, the only advice I think we'd really have for you is just to enjoy where you're at. I think a lot of times, and I, I am guilty of this way more um, than most, but I'll get, I'll get to my goals and I don't take time to appreciate that I got there and I'll jump off to the next thing. Um, and what that does for me is I don't, I just can't appreciate like kind of how far I've come. Um, so I, I would say definitely an advice to you and advice to other people is just to um, relish the fact that you have achieved certain goals and just be okay with that for a time. Um, and don't feel like you have to jump in. And I don't think that, I don't think it's any, there's anything bad about not having any long-term goals right now. Um, I just think it, I don't know. Does, does that make sense? Just being, um, I think being present and enjoying where you're at. Um, cause I, I struggle. I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like, Oh, I feel great. Look what I did. I'm just going to like sit on this for a while. And Jordan's <laughs> like, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? So I think we do a pretty good job of balancing each other out with that yeah. because I am like, okay, I, you know, I'm at this point I feel good for now, but I think it is important to, not go too far in either direction to not be completely goal focused, but also not to be completely content with where you are. Yeah. Right. And I think that I was kind of 
going on to the next thing, on to the next thing for so long that Jordan, you're right. It is kind of like you need to just stop and look at what you've done and appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something I struggle with. Oh, yeah. I say that as advice. But like I said, I struggle with that, too, um, because it's hard for me to go not go. OK, I got to that level. You know, that I, I need to go to this next level because my mind is always thinking 10 steps ahead. Um, but it's, it doesn't really work like that, because if you think 10 steps ahead, then you're never going to get to a point where you can appreciate anything, because if you're always thinking 10 steps ahead, then there's never going to be time to appreciate and really value where how far you've gotten, like no matter how far you get. So mm -hmm. important thing for me to remember, too. Yeah. <laughs> and I think another thing, I really liked the Baltimore Magazine videos I did. And I think it was along the lines of a documentary, kind of a short documentary. Um, and I always liked doing that in class and in school. So maybe down the road, I could kind of work on a documentary as a little side piece. Because you should still continue to do work kind of for yourself and not for any job in particular. Just something that, like we said earlier, you, something where you can express yourself. Yeah, a passion project. A passion project. A passion piece. A passion, if you piece. passion piece. That sounds fancier. Okay, well, you really <laughs> shot down my project. Idea. <laughs> this is what my I bad. mean when they gang up on me. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> So can you give our listeners, Justine, um, just one piece of advice that you've learned in your 25 years of life? You're 25, right? <laughs> uh, yep. Okay. <laughs> just checking. <laughs> uh, just one piece. I have like three pieces. You can give, Four pieces. You can give out as many pieces right. as you want. Four pieces sounds Seven. good, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Sit down, everybody. I've got <laughs> some advice for you. Uh, number one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to yell, though. <laughs> Do your best. Forget the rest. Nice. And I think that's self-explanatory. Yeah, that's a good one. number. Number two. And this is if <laughs> you're going into video. Um, treat every project, whether it's for school or unpaid, like it's your baby. Because... When you go in for interviews for jobs, they're not going to say, oh, wow, look at that. You have a degree. You did really well in school. That's great. They're going to say, let me see what you've done. So all of those projects will make up your reel or your portfolio. And that's really how you get jobs. And I had a professor tell me this, this little piece of advice. I think halfway through my college career, and I wish I heard it sooner, because I probably would have taken earlier projects a little more seriously. <laughs> yeah, that's but, great. I love that piece of advice. That's cool. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just really important to build up your portfolio and your body of work so you can keep getting jobs. But also, it's cool to just look at what you've done and to see where you've come from, because the difference will be insane you know, from where you started to three years later. And that's always really cool to look at. Um, let's see. Oh, my third piece of advice. <laughs> um, so I just like to remind people that there is no equation for life. And a lot of people think that you have to do things a certain way or in a certain, certain order. And, you know, if you don't want to go to college, that's fine. College isn't the only option. And if you want to work for yourself, like Jordan, you know, make it happen. If you, if it takes you seven years to get your degree, so what? Like, you have to go after what you want to feel fulfilled. And there's just not, there's not one equation for that. And I think people forget that that's, there's other options. It's not like, you know, uh... I'm going to go to college. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to find a person and get married, <laughs> <laughs> move into a house, which that's fine too. It's just, it just depends on how you are and what your goals are. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's absolutely perfect advice, especially for this podcast. It's like what we constantly are preaching. It's just that 
exactly like you said. It's not like you can't have like a cookie cutter life because everybody's different and somebody may get married young and it's perfect for them. Someone may not get married till they're 50 and that's perfect for them. Some people may never own a home or never work for a corporation. It's just everybody's different. So I love that advice. Okay. And then here's my (laughs) last, my last piece of advice. It's really important. I want to remind you all to floss (laughs) and to wear, (laughs) (laughs) and to wear your retainer. Okay, because dental work is expensive. I like that you ended on that one. Yeah, that's a great one to end it on. <laughs> you really brought it all the way around. Full circle. Full circle. I think it's safe to say we have not talked about flossing yet on our podcast, so that was the first. Yeah, I mean, flossing, I think, is for everyone, so we will say that, you know. It's so important. I will say, for your third piece of advice, I was smiling and beaming the whole time. I didn't jump in there because I've... I've can beat that dead horse with that stuff, but 100% agree. Um, but that's all I'll say there. I'll let yeah, Miranda ask the last one. We don't want to get him started. <laughs> no, yeah. I didn't want to get myself started. I, that's yeah. what I was saying. But he was back to the Frisbees. Back yeah. to the Frisbees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so lastly, we just wanted you to share with how people can find you, how people can look at your videos for your radio station or just your, you know, your passion pieces (laughs) so just where people can find out more about you and your work okay well you can go to justineholsey.com and that is j-u-s-t-i-n-e-h-u-l-s-e-y was that was uh, (laughs) jboss.com taken uh i don't know i just felt like i do say jboss in some of my blog posts but you know, I'm trying to be professional here. <laughs> no, I think I think your website's great. It's definitely good. That's a good suggestion for anyone out there that wants to eventually start building a brand for themselves. Get a website in your own name. That's a good thing to do. Um, I would have got jordanring.com, but that was taken. Probably because Michael Jordan has a bunch of rings, and that's all you'll see if you type my name on, Am- on Google. You'll see Jordan, I- <laughs> Michael Jordan's basketball rings or whatever. Or I just... Or whatever. While we were talking, I just Googled my name. You show up? <laughs> I do. Nice. My Facebook my Facebook comes up first. See, I wish I showed up, but I don't. <laughs> One day. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I got nothing else. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm on if you go to that site, you'll find my uh my Instagram links and Facebook and yada, yada, all that fun stuff. Or you could just go to 98online.com, which is 98 Rock's website. Yeah, you can watch all the fun videos there. Cool. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Justine. Um, please stick around for a little bit after this so the episode finishes loading. Um, we don't think we told you that, but that's a good thing to note. <laughs> we appreciate you being on this show and taking your time on this Sunday afternoon to be with us. Uh, thank you for your stories and your suggestions. I think this made for a great episode. Well, thank you for having me. And don't forget to floss. <laughs> All right, Freedom Casters. Thank you for listening to that episode with J Boss, Justine Halsey. Hopefully you got some good information out of that. I know we enjoyed having her on the show. Uh, if you're listening on my website, please scroll down and leave us a comment at the bottom. We would love to just connect with you there and answer any questions you might have. Uh, and we will send Justine there as well if she has any, if you have any questions for her. Um, also, if you could leave us a review on iTunes, you know we need them. Uh, please go there and do that for us. We would very much appreciate it. Uh, I think all you need to do is go on and search for Freedom Cast on iTunes. Uh, and you just need to have an iTunes account. And you can leave us a review there. It's simple, easy. Go ahead and do it for us. We would appreciate it. All right, I hope you have a good rest of your Friday. Stay weird, friends.